your lives, do what is right, and see the truth in our hearts. Such people don't say bad things about others. They don't do things to hurt their neighbors. They don't tell shameful things about those close to them. They hate those who fail to please God. And honor those who respect the Lord.
St. Matthew chapter 5, verses 1 to 12. Glory to you, Lord. Seeing the crowd, Jesus went up on the mountain, and when he sat down, his disciples came to him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you, and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Now, the Beatitudes all start with blessed are, or you have a happy life is. It's a recipe for a happy life. So it's interesting when you look at the word Beatitude, because it's made up of two words, in a sense. It's made up of the word be, like how we should be. And the other one is attitude. So sometimes we have attitudes that are good, Sometimes our attitudes aren't very good, right? But the attitudes are attitudes that are pleasing to God. So some of the attitudes are, blessed are the merciful. So people who are kind. And kind, even when other people aren't so kind in return. Or blessed are the peacemakers. So people who... Don't go into arguments and try to argue or even help people through. Or blessed are the poor in heart. That means people who want to follow God. Can we do that on our no matter what age we're at. If we're young or if we're older, right? He is always there to help us. And we're going to say it. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for the <coughs> words and the Beatitudes and wise things for healthy, goodless living for us to be blessed. Be with us and help us to live lives that give you honor. Thank you. 
God fill you all with great hope and joy and peace in your believing. Amen. Our message today for this, the fourth Sunday after the Epiphany, is from Paul's letter to the Corinthians, chapter 1, talking about wisdom of God and wisdom of the world, the foolish and those things that keep us from God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The foolishness of God is wiser than men. The weakness of God is stronger than men. A very important passage for myself, and quite unforgettable. It's actually the first verse of scripture I learned as a kid at catechism, confirmation class. At the age of 10, I didn't read that much into it. But somehow, I knew it was special. Since then, life has taught me to treasure its powerfully simple, comforting message. When we are weak within ourselves, we are strong in the Lord. Many times it wound up becoming a very pivotal passage, that foolishness of God is wiser than men. Strong, encouraging word, even years back as I struggled as an art teacher and sub and forcing me to lessen my own desires and think of more of humble trust in God and where he was leading. Going into life with his guiding presence so often it's quiet and hard to hear. But divine ways of God do sometimes prevail even if we have other ideas. It was this passage that even helped the day that I was contacted by a Roman Catholic school that I had taught in the inner city of Buffalo. As the principal, the nun was going to offer me a full-time art teaching job, and, but they had just received my letter that I was going into the seminary, and they did tell me it, it was a greater calling, they thought. Sometimes divine timing works that way. The foolishness of God is wider than me or us. He chooses the unexpected to carry his son's presence and love into the world. I would have to trust that his strength would rest in my own weakness, something that has carried me all through the years, a trust which has given way for hope and peace to grow. And what exactly gives confidence to a trusting faith? And that is the message of Jesus' cross, the word of the cross. And we see images of crosses in here, on our altar, I'm wearing one, you may have one, and all of you do have one, the day that a cross was put on your forehead and heart from baptism, a cross that only God can see. The outside world will only see your Christ-like way of living. Don't be fooled thinking people of the world hate Christians because of the cross. We're not threatened here because of our message. Satan hates us because of Jesus' cross. Those who assault with evil hate Jesus' cross. But people of our world that we encounter need lots of help. It can be very hard at times to see Christ-like living coming from Christian people. <laughs> Hence, Apostle Paul's message of the cross. With our mouths and hands and our hearts, we do proclaim Christ crucified. Not just what we say, mostly by how we live. It's not an image. It's a message. Signs and wisdom, those are the things people usually see and trust. Paul knows his audience and community. An educated Corinthian culture where he is writing to responds well to images and intelligence. The Jews are used to signs from God through the prophets. Greeks are used to philosophical education. Both inevitably trust in the senses. Corinth is a seat of arts and commerce, as well as corruption and abuse. The disparity between rich and poor painfully evident even in Paul's day, as one might expect under those circumstances, rampant selling of anything you can imagine to escape and do pleasure. When trusting God is hard, trusting people is harder still. So trust in ideas, thoughts, ideals, dreams. Maybe we can control the outcomes. Some define human wisdom as the art of living well to be happy, to take care of you. Organize life to escape any and all problems for you, especially pain and suffering. But one can only escape so long, go so far. Reality will always be there, and that thought creates anger or depression. 
So the inner ego tells us, oh well, do what you like, nothing makes you happy, so nothing will ever go perfectly for you, so who cares? But the truth is, no human can be happy alone, without others, without support, without an encountering God who forms trust in our lives through Christ. Satan wants us isolated, like islands disconnected from any person, any word, apart from his own lies. St. Paul speaks somewhat negatively about that wisdom, because in the name of human wisdom, Jesus was never seen as wise or strong by the eyes of those who looked at him, especially the religious leaders of his day. He's born to a mother and father among the lowest of the low within the Jewish social hierarchy. Carpenters were your basic fix-it people who patched up people's things most who couldn't afford new. Jesus' popularity as a traveling rabbi waned early on. He's supposed to be the Messiah and play up that high-profile role like a celebrity, like a politician. He's failed at rallying full support. He failed to devise the necessary strategy to cast the Romans out of Israel, the most necessary part of a Messiah's job. Jesus disturbed the established order. He called social structures into question, changed people's notions of religion and God and his heavenly kingdom. He appeared a politically dangerous fool, at times a crazy man. Human wisdom and plotting schemes condemn Jesus to death. He is publicly executed on a cross, the highest of profile means of execution at that time. All but one of his disciples runs away and hides. Looks like Jesus is lost. But our Apostle Paul tells a different story. He claims rather unbelievably that the one who lost so completely is not only loved by God, chosen by God, beloved at his baptism in the Jordan, but is the very wisdom and ways of God to bring change to the whole human race. So how much more important to emphasize wisdom in the language of the cross and message and word and language here in the Greek Paul uses the basic logos. We've heard that even in computer jargon. Beyond the mere fact that Jesus' cross exists, logos is the entire reason for Jesus coming to us as one of us. It is the overarching plan of God's covenant to save us. To the Jews, that meant the Torah, the ancient biblical wisdom, the promise of salvation. To the Greeks, it's the we reason behind the whole cosmic order of life. For Paul, it's the way of living in Christ and then embodying that message, his word, that we are his logos, his word, his message in the world. And that pushes against our pride. The cross is all about what God has done for us in Christ and not about us. It is his power, his work, at work in us doing what we cannot do. What no person of the world can do. The cross is really embarrassing to human arrogance because Jesus didn't even do anything to escape it. In fact, he embraced it. He embraced its pain, its mockery, its vulnerability. Faced with death, we usually fight to live. Jesus fights to die and die our death. And he kills death because he shed perfect blood. Death is not a failure. Death is freedom. Death which proves the power of love. Weakness and strength, they are totally misunderstood by everyone today. Weakness is seen as giving your enemy the upper hand. Weakness means you're exposed, unarmed, taken by surprise. Which describes most of our life in the world, doesn't it? We don't like feeling or being weak. It's threatening, it's stressful. It's much easier to feed those insecurities, to try to build our own selves up, think we're better or smarter or wiser or wealthier or more powerful or anything other than weak. Strength, likewise, is wrongfully interpreted as control or power or muscle or survival of the fittest or the richest or most intelligent or anything that looks or sounds big and impressive. God rejects all that powerful and wise stuff and makes total solidarity with the fools that we are. True power is in restraint, not giving in to our knee-jerk emotional reactions, disagreeing without being disagreeable. A calm spirit, a gentle presence, 
wise, expectant, alert, being present in the moment to be of help. Weakness is good because we're not relying on ourselves to fix anything, at least not within our own lives. We're relying on God to bring out his best outcome, which will carry us through, which will strengthen what is weak, because he will be doing the strengthening. We're relying on God's muscle, God's wisdom, God's way, and that vulnerability is true strength. We're left wide open for God to have his way with us, to dwell in us by water and word and spirit. The baptismal faith, bath washing, puts us into Jesus' cross. And then dependence on God, there is our confidence. Dependence on God is our security. It is our wisdom. It is our blessed life. It is a peace-filled life. And that is life with Jesus' cross. Trusting that God will bring out the good for those who love and follow him. Because he has in the past. And he will until the end of time. That message of the cross shows how Jesus joins all people at their lowest to bring out his most perfect strength through that vulnerability. And by grace and forgiveness and mercy, we slowly embrace our own vulnerability and know that we are loved precisely there in that place, as we are. And that is why embracing the message of Jesus' cross frames a lot of what we have been discussing in our youth catechism instruction. Christ crucified for me and the world is life-changing. Seeing Jesus at the cross is the heart of the scriptures. That learning to read and enjoy those scriptures keeps embracing that cross for us. Learning to trust that no matter what, Jesus is with them as he is with all of us. And that means when we are vulnerable within a culture, we who are in Jesus have nothing to be afraid of. We're the very faces of Jesus, his holy presence in the world. In accompanying other vulnerable folks we meet, in our culture as we together walk and grow in faith and a life where they follow along with us. That is the mission we are chosen into. We are forgiven into that power to forgive others. We are viewed in mercy, and with mercy we see other people with that same love and compassion. There is strength and weakness, God's strength, and that's the best strength to have. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and now may the peace of God which goes beyond our human understanding guard your hearts and lives in the one true faith in Jesus Christ, now and always. Amen. You may remain seated as we sing our canticle, Magnificat.
gracious and loving Father, thank you for giving Jesus to bear our sin and failures and raise us up to walk in newness of life. Thank you that he has won peace for the whole world by his death on the cross. And thank you for bringing us to baptism and faith so that we enjoy the blessings of life and salvation in Jesus' name. Gracious God, hear our prayer. And hear us to our call for help. Thank you for the families who are united in the faith. Support and sustain them by your word. Give them hope with the people given to care and comfort them. And keep them growing in faith, trust, and security. Gracious God, hear our prayer. And listen to our call for help. Give the whole church wisdom and witnessing to the truth of Christ in our times of upheaval and confusion. May the church have winsome influence in making your truth and love known to all who need it. Make our own endeavors at outreach and service bear fruits in your holy name. Gracious God, hear our prayer. And listen to our call for help. We pray for peace in the world wherever there is division and violence. Bring an end to hatred and hostility. And bring people to live together as children of your one human family. Ease the pain of those suffering from the shootings in the U.S. Ease the violence in Ukraine. Bring loyalty and harmony to all married couples, to parents and children, and strengthen all family relationships. Gracious God, hear our prayer. And listen to our call for help. Supply all that we need for our daily life, dear Father. Thank you for the rain and sunshine you give to us in good measure. And please prosper the work of our farmers. Give healing to those who are not well at this time. Support and strengthen those we know with special needs and those whom we now name silently in our hearts before you. We commend to your care Pastor Gary's father, Bernard Kenzel, in Albuquerque, Tammy Granton, friend of Paul Walks, Wendy Shook as she goes in for surgery, David McBride to give him comfort from the passing of his wife, Catherine, Paula Black, the Mackey's step-great-grandson, Cain, many of some of the uh, residents at Luther Manor who are still unwell, for Marilyn Tuber, Rick Van Clercum, Maureen's dad, Sheldon, Virginia McLaughlin, Bill Sowery, Eric and Deanna Albright, Eric Bodner, Jeff and Sue Noel, Pauline and Mona, John and Lois and Emily. Gracious God, hear our prayer. Gracious God and Father, teach us to see your own dear Son in the face of all who suffer. May we be your instruments of love and healing in the world. We ask this through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And using Luther's morning prayer, we pray together. I thank you, Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For in your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe have no power over me. Amen. Let us praise the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. We close with our last song, Here I Am, Lord.
worship today. Good to see all the family of Christ out in our joining voices together this morning. The, the worship folder has a lot of announcements. Uh, please take a look at those things that are coming up, the events, and Lent isn't that far away, so that season is being advertised early. Is there anything else that needs to be mentioned or added to what's been... Then we go in God's grace, serving our Lord in peace and joy. Thanks. Thanks. 